stay clean. Good morning, Bruce Lee. Amazing view. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is gonna be a fucking weird video, man. Uh, clearly, you guys already know why you guys are here. Uh, because of the thumbnail. Let's go, uh, let's go take a look at the damages. Oh, bro. Okay, all right, let's talk about this. First off, the damages were actually much worse than this. I actually spent like maybe an hour yesterday actually banging it out. That's why you see this piece of wood here. Um, looks a little beat up. This is the side right here that I smacked with the sledgehammer and this was up against pretty much the frame in there trying to bend that out. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys will actually uh, or you guys actually already know about this crash. I'm just updating YouTube a little bit later. Um, I posted on Instagram the night that it happened, literally maybe an hour after, or 30 minutes after. That was one hell of a night. Should I have vlogged it? Maybe, but honestly, I was just out there mainly just to cruise. Uh, turns out I didn't just cruise the mountain uh, that I was talking to uh, with Mike Mike in uh, his vlog that was the mountain I uh, chased that night and uh, it's somewhere in Mexico don't even worry about it uh, that mountain was fucking sick so I was cruising and then cruising turned into drifting and linking turns and hairpins and it was probably the funnest fucking night of my entire life um, so if you guys ask me was it worth it? Fuck yeah, dude. It was so worth it. Um, definitely gotta say the camber that I'm running in the rear did not help the situation. Um, as you can see, I didn't really hit uh, the wheel. Mainly what happened was it was just kind of like this part of the quarter panel. Pretty much just love tapped the mountain pretty good. Um, I'm running about eight degrees of camber. Definitely not my drift setup, um, but on, I just I just couldn't contain myself, dude. The, that mountain was too perfect. The roads were freshly paved, and I just could not resist, man. And it was, I was having the fucking time of my life. And I'm definitely gonna go back there, for sure. This is honestly so worth it. <laughs> um, definitely gonna fix this. I don't really, see this as too much of an issue to fix so i'm not really sweating it so if you guys are asking me am i upset that this happened not really pretty sure just like a little bit of bondo will pretty much take care of all this obviously got to break all that down down here um to kind of cover this i mean I, I banged it out pretty good already it was pretty far scrunched in you can you guys can go to my instagram and uh reference how bad the damages were and how far that was sent in but I managed to get it far out enough in my opinion to where I can actually run a bumper like a v-speed bumper in the back so doing this definitely ruined my rocket bunny diffuser setup but it's all good this though I wasn't able to bend this back out so I was kind of rubbing this the whole way down the mountain and then I still actually have this piece right here so I think I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the car and uh, see how much I can salvage this quarter panel if it's not worth salvaging I'm probably gonna hit up sensei and uh, get another rear quarter panel and just kind of redo this um, and yeah it should be pretty smooth sailing I at first when I was doing all the body work it felt like a lot but I've learned so much since then that I think I can probably get this done in no time if I were to redo the whole thing. But I think my goal right now is to just fix this quarter panel and see if I can salvage this. And if I can, then fuck it, I'm gonna keep sending it. But holy shit, man. 
I know you guys really didn't get to see the car too much in one piece. Um, gratefully, <laughs> uh, thankfully, this side of the car looks absolutely mint still. The front of the car still looks mint. I mean, for the most part, yeah. <laughs> and uh, oh, we getting some love. But yeah, dude, that is a well-deserved battle scar. Um, yeah, I think it's time for new wheels, guys. These wheels are pretty aggressive. Um, a little too aggressive, maybe, for uh, drifting, I guess. Uh, it looks absolutely great. Um, but yeah, eight degrees of camber, honestly, is too much. I've drifted with this much camber in the past and you know, it just gets old real quick just because tires don't last as long because you're on such a small patch of tire. I mean, it looks good, it, it's sick. Um, if you guys are filming, I say full send, you know, drift it with a bunch of camber, just get some footy of it just to have and you can watch that all day. Um, I think that'll be fun. But right now my goal is to kind of have fun with the car and still look good. And I think if I'm gonna keep that balance or maintain that balance, I'm definitely gonna need to run uh, a good amount less camber. I think at, at most like minus four, because when I was drifting at Carnival, I had like minus, yeah, around minus four degrees. And that was still, you know, drivable. It was really fun and I had just enough grip. So I think we might try and shoot for those numbers again. Um, the front, I had no problem. I have full angle. I can full lock it and it doesn't rub, surprisingly, which is super sick. Um, and that's like 11 degrees of camber. It is kind of much, but I don't know. It just looks so good that I might just keep it if I don't have any problems with it. But fuck, that looks so good. I'm so sad I'm gonna get rid of that camber though. So yeah, guys, I mean, I... I read a bunch of the comments on my Instagram post. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are bummed that, you know, I already bapped the kit, but um, sorry, I guess. I mean, I don't really see a point in having a sick car if I can't drive it the way I want to drive it. Um, and I think that's just kind of the fun part of doing all this is building a sick fucking car, driving it as hard as you possibly can, and then if you fuck shit up, you fix it. That only helps myself and whoever believes in the same shit. And doing that just kind of pushes me and my skills to elevate, so. Whew, lesson learned though, lesson learned. Honestly, while the S13 is out of commission, I might just take this thing up the mountain. Fuck it. <laughs> I actually did already take this car on that same mountain. Uh, that time it was also just a cruise. Obviously I say that, but you know, like obviously I can't help myself, so I was clutch kicking those turns, which is why I brought this this car out. And uh, yeah, man, I fucking love that mountain, dude. I, I honestly just want to live there. So you know, the funniest thing is, I was supposed to take my 240 to Matt Field shop and just kind of like, show it off to him, you know, and kind of like flex on him because, you know, he's a pro and all like, but yeah, I got this sick 240 and it's like, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> now when I show up, he's probably just going to clown me, not just for my height, but for this too. Oh, well, I'm still going to visit him one day. My life has been so much easier now that I have a cart full of tools. Um, it's a little messy right now because I, you know, I was just kind of sloppy just trying to get my 240 uh, up and running again. Uh, I always get way too excited when I work on my own car, but when it's not my car, I'm like on top of it. I'm just like very, very, very on it when it comes to being organized and stuff. But obviously when it's my own shit, I get overly excited and I just like get sloppy.
some evidence that I actually bapped the mountain. There is most or half of the dirt that was stuck on the car because Arlen actually did me a favor and sweeped that up for me. Thank you, Arlen. God damn, she is so beautiful still though. Honestly, fucking love this car so much. She doesn't even look that bad, dude. I might even just keep her like this. Fuck it. Got the 240 on the two post. Looking pretty still. Fitment is still sick when it's up in the air too, honestly. Like, damn. But yeah, I kind of figured out a way to get this car on the two post without having to remove anything, which is really nice. When you drive a low car for a while, you kind of figure out solutions. I mean, it takes a little more work, but honestly, it's better than just removing and reinstalling kit, honestly. Just fucking use your brain, I guess. I don't know. Uh, fucking tasty, bro. Look at that. Look at that, dude. A little burn ski through the fiberglass, by the way. Sensei, your kit is really, really high quality, dude. This fiberglass is honestly really fucking strong. And when this was bashed in, like caving in like that, it seemed like the fiberglass really held up and stayed um, well put together. Another thing I really wanna say is, damn, that 3M panel bond that I used to mold this kit on is no joke, guys. Like if you think like an adhesive cannot keep a kit on, well, let me tell you something. It definitely fucking can because this kit ends right here and comes up and goes along like this curve right here. And when I bap this, this just caved in. That none of this up here broke off. That's fucking impressive, man. I am, I mean, in case you guys were, you know, doubtful of this kit and whether it would stay on the car legitimately or sturdy enough, well, here's your answer, dude. I just bapped the mountain, sending it in a drift and it held itself together. So, 3M panel bond is good shit. The kit is a good kit. Fiberglass is good quality. I mean, Sensei only does high quality shit, to be honest. Air tools are sick, brah. Up, 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 up. Come on, dude, what the fuck? There we go. Yo guys, looks like I have something to work with. Fortunately, this piece didn't disappear. It actually held on for dear life when I was driving this car back to the shop. Damn, this piece unfortunately got caught um, around the tire. So, you know, obviously you can see that was supposed to be there and then it got caught and then rubbed out. So I'm gonna see if I can repair this with fiberglass cloth and resin. Um, Keeping this structure, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know if it's worth it to save this piece or if just cut it out and lay another piece. Um, following this arc might may be a little bit tricky, but I mean, fuck it. We'll, we'll see if we can figure something out. All right, so making some progress. It's been like about an hour since I started trying to repair this shit. Um, kind of use some duct tape to hold uh, that piece that was kind of dangling there in place. And then I pretty much hit it with some Bondo glass and some quick setting epoxy that I bought from uh, Harbor Freight. I think it was like three, three to five bucks for this little combo pack right there. And then we just had Bondo glass laying around at the shop. So I just kind of threw some on there and then epoxied it and uh, it dried up really quick and I'm pretty sure she's gonna be strong enough uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take these pieces off because I've already had this chilling for like a little while now so yeah that was pretty sturdy actually yeah dude I mean it's pretty hard to the top so I think that's pretty good and then as you guys may know, the, you know, from here on, it's pretty much just gonna be sanding and then some Bondo work and then 
respray right here though this is the side that kind of like messed with me a little bit i was like how am i gonna fix this because honestly when i bapped the car i probably should have pulled this out first but then honestly this shit was like so crunched in and it was like 12 30 in the morning one in the morning and i was like fuck i don't want to be stranded out here i should probably get get the fuck out of there as soon as possible and uh yeah, so I really didn't care. I was like, you know, I bought the car already, fuck it. I didn't really think about, you know, the repair process and the fact that this was actually probably savable. Um, so I don't know, this is gonna be interesting. I kind of held it up kind of as best I could. Um, it seems like the quick setting epoxy is doing pretty good at like holding it in place. Yeah, because before it was just wanted to crunch in. So that's pretty good actually. I'm pretty sure that's something I can work with and then I can kind of start making my lines with Bondo as I go. But yeah, wow, so far, pretty decent recovery. This, I'm not too worried about this. This is just gonna be like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Most body shops will see this and be like, dude, no problem. Yeah, dudes, we're making good progress. So I kind of just came up with this idea real quick to use duct tape to kind of keep the arc of my fender. So when I add, uh, bondo glass it'll kind of stay because you know usually gravity will work against the bondo and it'll want, kind of want to you know drip and not like kind of mold so it worked out <laughs> i guess that's pretty sick honestly and here we are it was kind of cool the duct tape Honestly, I thought the duct tape was gonna kind of be hard to take off, but um, once the epoxy started really getting, or I'm sorry, once the Bondo glass started getting really, really hot from the hardener uh, chemical reaction, the duct tape just kind of peeled off real nice and easy. So it was cool to have that support that there because now I can kind of take an air sander or whatever and start cutting away at this. But it looks like she bonded really nicely to the to the fender all right guys it's starting to look like an actual fender again <laughs> so i kind of went through some hurdles with this um so i kind of mixed the bondo glass with this harbor freight epoxy and that shit just peeled right off turns out the bondo glass really really likes um just a hardener that it comes with. I didn't have the blue hardener it came with, so I just used like a good amount of red, and that shit seems to be reacting really, really well with the red. That like, that, that shit's really sturdy. So I went ahead and just laid a bunch of that. Um, you know it's working because it gets really hot, and um, yeah, it's, oh fuck. Good? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm just tripping over, tripping over myself. But yeah, dudes, it's starting to look a lot better it's starting to look like an actual fender and then from here it's just gonna be a little bit of cleaning a little bit of body work and then we're fucking cherry dude hey bro so how do you think this is gonna turn out <laughs> you think i'm gonna be able to make it look pretty legit you can give it to look pretty legit like i said it's just all about like how much time you spend on the actual sanding yeah <laughs> I mean, that's all it is i mean you can keep adding layers and get it to as smooth as you can it's just time yeah, you're right. That's the same thing you told me when I started this kit, and yes, it took a fuck ton of time. But now that I have the proper tools, I have this sick little air sander. Um, I think we're gonna be able to cut this down. Oh, dude, for sure, bro. For the majority sure. Of this is like done on the floor. I remember, and I, I was just like, holy shit. I know. This guy needs some lips. <laughs> look how look how much we've grown, dude. <laughs> it's huge, bro. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. Black nut. Ew. <laughs> Anyways, guys, check it out. Wow, dude, I kind of surprised myself with this one. I did not think I was going to get this far, nor did I think it was going to turn out this decent. Wow. Wow. What do you think, Brett? It looks pretty good. Like, especially with the way that the material blends in. Like, uh -huh. a lot of the cracks have basically disappeared. Yeah. It's like all just blend back to one piece now. Yeah. I just went and fucking like spreaded the uh, Bono glass by hand over it just because that was I felt like the smoothest way to do it And then after that just hit it with the uh, air sander 
and uh, it out. yeah, smoothed it out, just finessed it, and Last just kind of had fun with it, to be honest. Blazing putty and then fine sand it. Pretty just much. A little bit of fine sanding and be good to go. Cherry, bruh. Cherry. Well, that's pretty much a good amount of work for today. I mean, I didn't even spend that much time on it. Uh, today was more of like shop errands and kind of getting stuff done uh, for the business paperwork wise and bank stuff and kind of booking in appointments. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of tired. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, so I guess this is the end of the vlog. This is so weird, man. It's been a while. Like, again, I don't really know how to end videos, but um, I guess I'll kind of give a little sneak peek on what I'm going to do tomorrow. I got a client of mine coming in tomorrow. His name's Daniel. I'll probably end up picking the vlog up and kind of vlog throughout my work day and uh, see how that goes and upload it and see if you guys like it. If so, sick. If not, whatever. I won't do it anymore. <laughs> but yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for making it to the end. Um, I'll catch you guys. Uh, <laughs> bruh. Fuck, dude. Vlogging is so hard. It, it takes practice, bro. You haven't it's, for like, what? Uh, months, four months? Actually, it's not even that hard. I just, I just gotta talk, you know, and tell everybody what's going on. But anyways, thank you guys so much. And remember, empty your mind and grind. Peace out. <laughs>